By around nine, the doctor walked in with a number of nurses okay. and the other doctor that had also been seeing me. Yes. And I thought they've come to my rescue. Mm. Boy, he came and said, Niuyu mama, amekuwa kikata kuza. She's been here for a whole week. She's been refusing to go give birth. She doesn't want to do now. Look at her. So I'm here to show you it is not my fault. Hi everybody, welcome to Being Kambua. My name is Kambua and I'm so happy that you have taken the time to join me today. In case you're stumbling upon this channel for the very first time, Being Kambua is a space that we have created to basically have conversations that are difficult, conversations around motherhood and how unconventional it can be for many of us, talking about things that make us uncomfortable because we cannot normalize something until we talk about it and talk about and talk about it until it becomes normalized it becomes normal and realizing that there's nothing to be ashamed of if you have experienced a miscarriage if you have lost a baby if you have had a difficult journey to fertility if your journey to motherhood has led you in the direction of adoption or whichever path it has led you to this is where we have those conversations and I'm so happy that you're a part of this community. I get to look through the comments that come through on YouTube, on Instagram, on Facebook, and please follow the pages. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, and some of your messages really, actually all of your messages really touch me very deeply. Thank you for taking the time to do that, to drop a comment, to share. But I want to highlight some of the messages that came in this week. Last week, I shared with you uh, my journey to having Nathaniel, the one who stayed. Uh, remember, I shared with you a prayer that my mother made when I was... Um, I had just had a miscarriage and my journey had been so difficult, had been many years trying to have a child. And when my mother made that prayer that, you know, and say, saying, first of all, thanking God for giving me that baby or that pregnancy, even though I lost it. And then saying, God, we are now trusting you to give us the one who will stay. And so many of you have said, oh my gosh, can God give me the one who will stay? And I want to tell you that he will give you the one who will stay. And here are some of the messages that came in this week. Um, one boy said, I am a mom who went through the NICU and it is my dream to see something like the Ronald McDonald House established in Kenya for parents with children who have long-term stay in hospital. It is truly needed. In case you're wondering, I did share with you about how my son Nathaniel came at 34 weeks and what being a preterm mom means. It's a completely different uh, ball game. A friend of mine wrote me from the US and she said, Kamboa, I never even knew knew about this whole preterm NICU journey. I had no idea. And indeed, a lot of parents just have no idea because your journey doesn't lead you there. So this is why we are here coming out and having these conversations so that you can be sensitive um, to each other. That when you hear somebody telling you, my baby came early, you know how to hold space for them. Here's another message um, that came in for me on uh, Instagram from Faith. She said, I have been following you for a while and thank you for the amazing amazing work that you do. Thank you for your boldness and vulnerability. Words cannot begin to express how grateful I am and I'm sure so many will agree. This episode is relatable to me today because I was born premature like your son. The words that you spoke that we are fighters and that there's nothing hard for us has gotten me shedding tears. I have felt the love of a mother talking to a daughter, the assurance of it and the affirmation and encouragement. Through you, God has used you to speak to a child whose mother is not near, but reminded that in these moments of doubt, discouragement, that I am a fighter. Thank you for being used and accepting to be used Though I may not meet her or talk to her, she passed away when I was a child. I have felt embraced and lifted today. Such a beautiful message. And for me, it means everything that that's what you have taken home. If you have felt 
even as a mother, that you, uh, you are affirmed that you're doing a good job. Thank you for fighting for your babies is what I say. Thank you. All right. And um, go on and catch, on the, catch up on the other episodes that we've had. We had Dr. Sylvia telling us about parenting through special needs. She has two boys who are on the spectrum. We spoke to Faith, who has a beautiful baby girl who has cerebral palsy and just what their journeys look like and how we can support and hold space for each other today. I am joined by somebody who's very special and dear to my heart. We recently reconnected on social media. I met her when she was a very young girl. Dorcas <laughs> Mave. How old were you when I met you? I think I was either 16, 17. Yes. Somewhere because I'd cleared high school. Yes. And I was in that cast space. Uh-huh. Yes. Fresh out of high school, this <laughs> yeah. one. Dorcas Mave. But you're still, I mean, looking at you, you're still just as beautiful as I remember, still as gracious as I remember and Thank graceful. You. Thank you. <laughs> um, and you you reached out to me because were you did you want to do music or why were you reaching yeah, out to me? Yeah, I, I was in that space. You know, I've always been singing. I'm a pastor's child, so yes. church was like home. Yes. So I was like, I really want to go to the studio. I don't have money. Yeah. How how will I do this? And then I come from a family of seven. Mm -hmm. I'm the firstborn. Uh -huh. So you're thinking, I don't want to stress my parents right now. So let me see how I can go about this. Then it was at Twakutukuza in Nairobi Chapel. Huh. Then I, I was like, I think I want to talk to Kambu. But then I was standing there, there was a friend, a long-time friend. Yes. I, he was serving in Tokutukuza. It was it a he or a she, I don't remember. Okay. Then I'm like, can I talk to Kamwa then? The person brought you, I was like, oh my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what am I going to say? Yeah. And I'm like, my name is Dorcas. I don't know, I come from Congo. I'm like, I would like to go to the studio, but I don't know where to start from. And you're like, can we meet? Mm -hmm. And you gave me your number. I was like, huh? So she can just give out her number like that. Because <laughs> I was in that period from high school, I was really bullied mm. because of being dark skinned. Mm. And there was this guy who would come to class and he's like, I can see darkness. He will literally do like this. I'm seeing darkness. I think someone is, oh, it's you. And so I was in that serious season whereby I wasn't feeling good about yeah. myself. Yeah. So I didn't think I deserved someone's time. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I deserved somebody I see on the screen screens yeah. to actually stop, yeah. talk to me, give me the yeah. number. So for me, it was more than the music yeah. that moment. Yeah. So I actually thought maybe I'll text and then she'll just ignore the message. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, we and it about goes it. like that. So yeah. it's like, okay, let me try. So I texted and you're like, let's meet at Valley Arcade. Yes. So the day came. Yeah. That was my first date outside. Really? Yes, at a <laughs> Java. <And> then, <laughs> Okay. And then I remember you ordering and I'm looking at the menu. I'm like, oh, what are these? I don't even know what they are. You remember? I don't know if you remember. And then you I ordered. I remember. And I said, I'll take the same. Okay. Ah, I didn't like water. It took off bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> what did I order? It was this conch white coffee with no sugar. <laughs> I remember taking the first sip and I'm like, I'm doomed. <laughs> What is this? But I'm like, and then you ask me, do you like it? I'm like, mm hmm. <laughs> oh. I suffered. And it was the huge one. It yes. was a big mug. Yes. <sighs> my mouth was bitter that oh day. Oh my gosh, that is so funny. <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, so I stopped taking coffee. So I must have met you a very long time ago. Yes. It's been, oh my goodness, it's been many years, almost a yeah. decade since I stopped taking yeah. coffee. But I've always never taken sugar. So that yes. sounds, I, that is correct. I used to take very strong coffee yeah. and no sugar. The name of the thing you ordered sounded nice. Yeah. And I'm like, this must be nice. Yeah. After all, it's Kambua. <laughs> I'm People so out here taking bad things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Suffering, you suffer. So you suffered. Through I our suffered throughout the conversation, but I couldn't show it. I'm so sorry. So I'm like, if I show it, maybe I look like I am from the village or oh. something. So let me go through this yeah. anyway. So I always tell my husband, and they laugh. My yeah. sisters laughed at me. <laughs> 
yeah. Hey, I was yeah. like, this is bad. Oh my God. So that was really nice. So meeting you and talking with you boosted my confidence. Wow. Like, mm. okay, and as much as the music didn't go anywhere, you paid for the studio. Okay. I went, I did the song. Yeah. Okay, I didn't like how... You didn't like the song? No. Okay. Because mm-hmm. I didn't know how to write. So mm. it was written yeah. and given to me and I was feeling like this is not speaking who I am. In as much as it's not me who paid but Mm -hmm. I would like to leave out who God has made me to be so that Mm -hmm. didn't resonate with me yeah my dad actually printed them out their cds in our house oh my goodness yeah so they are there so for me that was a very good season God used you to remind me of who I was Mm. that I was seen yeah I was beautiful because you kept saying you're so beautiful and I'm like ah okay though that time I would I already started journey towards accepting myself and knowing I am made in God's image mm. and uh, so it really helped a lot yeah. I was like even if nobody else ever sees wow. me on the screen or so anywhere I am beautiful Kambua took me to Java yeah. and they took the bad coffee <laughs> <laughs> and she believed in my wow. ministry though she had never had mm. she had never seen I never even sang for you yeah you, and it's really helped wow. me. it boosted me so much that that really it touches my heart so deeply Dorcas because you know when you I've learned to, to walk in obedience mm-hmm. um, and God tells me to do something because I, I don't go dishing out my number to everybody yeah. but in those moments where I feel lean into this person mm. here is meet their need in whatever way you can mm-hmm. i've learned to obey those moments mm-hmm. moving in obedience to what god tells me to do even mm. when it doesn't make sense and not because i am expecting something out of it but simply mm. because god, god has told me do mm. and for me hearing you say that it means so much to me means everything to me because I didn't know what it meant to you Mm -hmm. at that time. I didn't know how significant it was. Mm -hmm. And um, I also love that you're bringing out something that, I mean, I know we are here to talk about motherhood, but you're also bringing out an aspect of being bullied because of your complexion. Yeah. I was told to bleach. You were told to bleach. Yeah. Wow. You Mm. know, first of all, I'll say again, you're so (laughs) gorgeous. And you, I mean, you you. guys look at this face. Look at her. (laughs) Look at her skin. It's like dark chocolate. Thank you. So stunning. It makes me really sad that uh, colorism is actually a real thing Mm. in Africa Mm -hmm. or among black people Mm -hmm. that we tell each other you know forget racism forget Mm. all of that other races thinking we're too dark we we bully each other on uh, the color of our skin Mm -hmm. you know so me as a black woman telling you to Mm. Bleach, bleach so that mm. you can be prettier mm. to be seen to be seen yeah. is actually very sad and yeah. when uh, um you know when i see people who have actually you know gone for skin lightening and all these things because simply because society is telling them they're not good enough mm. it's very heartbreaking for me yeah. um, but thank you for sharing that mm. dorcas and now, you know, I met you when you were a little girl, fresh from high school. Mm-hmm. Now you have another name. You added another name. Yes. Uh-huh. Please call me Mrs. Kababu. Mrs. Kababu. Yeah. You even blushed and you oh, said, yeah. oh. <laughs> like, please call me Mrs. Kababu. <laughs> so you yes. got married. Yes, we did. Congratulations. Thank you. Who you Kababu ametoka pandigani? Ametoka ukambani. So all Masako. the way from DRC <laughs> and ukambani met. Yes, we met. <laughs> Because it just happened. We yeah. met in the university. Okay. So he's a pastor. Yeah. I was doing Bachelor's of Science in Entrepreneurship in Africa International University. Mm-hmm. And he came to do theology uh-huh. in the same place. So we served in the worship team together. Yeah. And let me snitch on him. He used to Please. be Kabasa. He used to. Oh, oh, yes. But right now he's a whole pastor. He's no longer. Okay. Yeah, they're yes. no longer there. So. Okay. Mm. Wow. Okay, Pastor, Pastor. <laughs> His eyes were open. They That's were good. very open. She says from the first day, it's yeah. like this dark girl. Yes, I want the one, one I'm going to yeah. get. Yeah, mm. this deep melanin yes. is the one I want. Yeah. That's awesome. Mm. So you, you got married mm-hmm. and then you how long into your getting married mm-hmm. did your motherhood journey start? 
So I remember just two weeks before our wedding, mm -hmm. this is something else, I was a lady from church because he's a pastor, pastor's kid. Yes. And people know him and stuff. And mm -hmm. so the wedding was being planned mm -hmm. and a lady went to tell my mother-in-law, yeah. I have had a revelation from God okay. that the woman our pastor is marrying is barren. So he needs you? to be careful. Yeah. Wow. So they, they never showed me that woman when I went to church. Okay. So they didn't show me. Yeah. I don't know if she's still there or who it was. Mm -hmm. And he calls me and he tells me and he's like, he told the mom, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Whether the Lord showed her barren or no barren, I'm marrying her, the wedding is in two weeks. Wow. And funny, we had named our firstborn daughter before even our wedding before even anything. Okay. So we're just buying things for the house and he said, I think we should name our first child. And I think Sela sounds nice. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I agree. Yes. Sela. So wow. we already have a name. Yeah. And we know it's going to be a girl. There was a wow. conviction, but yeah. there's a woman who says she, he's, she's barren. been praying for the pastor's wife and the Lord showed her she's barren. So I was like, Okay, that's kind of weird because mm. that's nothing God has showed any of us. We have a name yeah. and it's like, whatever, we're going to have a baby. Mm. And so one month into, I, I conceived. Okay. So after the wedding, like one month. Wow, was, honeymoon baby. I was pregnant. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I was like, now remember after I had that, yeah. I was like now anxious. Mm. In as much as I had prayed and I knew. Yes. But hearing something from outside there's a way it just destabilizes yeah. you so after two weeks i'm already asking why am i not yet pregnant <laughs> <What>? <laughs> two weeks darkness okay <laughs> uh -huh. Third week, I'm like, why am i not yet pregnant could it be then it's like no yeah. it can't be you mm. are going to get pregnant mm. so when i found out i was pregnant i was really happy yes and uh, the journey was next. Mm. Didn't have morning sicknesses per okay. se. Was not throwing up or anything, but I used to sleep, Kampua. Ah. I used to sleep mm -hmm. until I'm wondering, eh, hey, Walini Roga. <laughs> 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 I was never like this. That yes. was not before I found out I was pregnant because yes. it took like a. I found out when I was entering my fifth week. Uh -huh. So I was like, I'm just sleeping. I'll wake up. I eat breakfast. He's made and I'll go back to sleep. Yes. So I'm like, what kind of a wife is this? Yeah. I sleep through the, throughout the day. Mm. So I found out I was pregnant. The pregnancy journey was very okay. Okay. Nothing wrong. Yeah. 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 Um, so it went all the way full time. Uh, had a natural birth, had a C-section. So I went all the way full time, I mm. think, because it was around 38 yeah. and five days. Yeah. So I was good. Mm. But my water broke. Mm. It was on um, Wednesday. Okay. I was at my parents' place because mm. uh, we agreed yeah. that because looking at where we were financially, mm. where we were staying, there, li there was literally nobody we knew apart from me and him. Okay. And so it was like, it's better yeah. you are in a place whereby somebody can help mm. take care of you, even if it's for a week. Yeah. So that the baby, at least you can stabilize a bit and you come home. Yeah. So I had come home from Athi River. Home mm -hmm. is in Gong. Okay. So I was there and on Wednesday, my water broke in mm -hmm. the evening. Mm -hmm. But I remember during the day in the morning, I kept feeling wet. Yeah. In between the night, mm -hmm. now on Tuesday. So I'll wake up, I'm like, what me? Nilianza kujikojole, what's wow, happening? Yeah. So fluids are just coming. I'll go clean up, I mm -hmm. go back to bed. When I wake up again to, the, to mm -hmm. go to the washroom, I'll find again my thighs are wet and stuff, and I'm like, okay, maybe something is up. Yeah. I told my mom and she said, go for checkup in the hospital. Yeah. So I went to the hospital just to be checked and to know if anything is happening. Because mm -hmm. she was like, it could be. The baby is coming out, wants yeah. to come out. So they check and they're like, are ah, you good? Yeah. Go back home. Okay. Nothing has opened yet. Ah. So I went back home and uh, I continued with my activities and did my hair, booked salon <laughs> appointment. <laughs> uh -huh. All those things we do to get ready because yeah. the hospital was not where I was doing cleaning. Okay. So I was to go see the person, the doctor who would deliver my baby the day after. So yes. my appointment was booked for that day. Mm -hmm. So 
unfortunately didn't come mm -hmm. the day I didn't reach to meet the doctor. So on that night, my water was sitting. I remember I was eating mm -hmm. and I just felt it like a tap has been opened wow. and wow, water. Yeah. My dad was sitting right across <laughs> me. I'm like, dad, I'm going to the hospital for real now. Yes, yes. <laughs> then he's like, huh? I'm like, look. Yeah. And everybody started shouting, mom, mom, Dorcas, the baby. Oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> so um, got ready and we went to the hospital, mm -hmm. but nothing. The way I wasn't opening. Wow, you are still not dilating? No. Uh -huh. So they checked me, you know, that dilation checking process. Yeah. I don't know the fingers. I had no idea about those things. Mm -hmm. And they say, you're still intact. It's like one centimeter. Oh, my goodness. But it's like it's opening. It's not opening. So I was just there. So I waited and I'm draining water. Mm -hmm. yeah. So from day one, mm -hmm. amniotic fluid coming out, Macintosh. They're just coming to change the Macintosh. Another wow. one. Yeah. Another one. So the smell, mm. it was like, I, I felt dirty. Yeah. Because that thing stings mm. and it's sticky on the body. Yeah. And I kept showering. I'm yeah. just going to the washroom and opening. What would you describe that smell as? Is it like not the smell of urine? Mm -hmm. No? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's just something very irritating. Yeah. And you know, it's constant and it's yeah. coming from within you. Yeah. And it's like the whole room is just smelling mm. like that. I don't know if other people smelt it, mm. but for me, it was like... I'm so sticky, my yeah. body is sticky, and yeah. the smell is so strong in my head, in mm. my nose. So day two, still no labor pains, uh -huh. but the fluid keeps coming out. Now mm. I'm already stressed. Yeah. Because they came, the doctors came. Remember, I'm working with doctors on duty since I didn't get to meet a doctor yeah. who would walk with me. Mm. And uh, I got induced. Okay. And it was a pill. I came to learn later there's also the water yes. injection. But for me, it was a pill and mm. it was very big. Mm. So it was inserted in me yeah. by someone. So, you know, all those discomforts, yes. you're feeling you're invading my privacy. Yeah. And I'm like, will this help with mm. the pains? Mm. And somehow we believe the labor pains are what will at least tell you you are about to give birth. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, it will work. Mm. Um, Nothing happened. You're day now three. On day no. three. Yeah. My goodness. No pain. The like, can. I think we should give you a second one. They gave me a second induction. Mm. I'm still draining. Amniotic fluid still coming out, mm -hmm. and all the discomforts of yeah. being pregnant yeah. and the baby. You don't know yeah. whether. I am going to give birth. Mm -hmm. And they keep asking, is the baby kicking? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, the baby's kicking. She okay. was kicking so much. Okay. And every time being checked, that mm. thing was so irritating, like yeah. checking the heartbeat. So it was like, hey, what's going on? Am I like at a bad place? Mm. So I was induced again, day two, for the second time, yeah. still no pain. Yeah. Day three, day four. Now this is Saturday. Mm -hmm. And there used to be now because there are doctors on duty. So this is three different doctors I have seen this far. Yes. And the two other doctors will tell me, you're still okay? Because I ask questions. I'm not like, getting labor pains. Is it normal? Mm -hmm. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. They're like, you're okay. I'm like, medically, I'm draining and all. Am I okay? Like, you're okay. The baby is okay. The baby is okay. Okay. One doctor, because there were three, the other one will just come noisy, like, wow, well, mama, unafako shaza, badu uko uku. Oh. And I'm like, okay. They're like, unafako shaza, by now you should go for theater, you should go for CS. This baby will get infection and the baby mm. is going to die. Wow. And I'm like, huh? But mm. the other two doctors are saying that I am okay. Yeah. It's like I am the one who's here now and I am telling you the baby is at risk. Mm. So this day, I just saw, because we were two in the room. It was just a shared room of two. Yes. We're really in this hospital. And I remember my neighbor was just wheeled out. Mm -hmm. She was called during, yeah. like, lunchtime. Yeah. And she was like, come to the reception. And she walked. She went for her. Her baby had sat in the womb. Okay. And the baby, she was low on amniotic fluid. Mm -hmm. So they were trying to increase it to see if it can help. Okay. So she went and she didn't come back for a very long time. Then when she came back, she was wheeled in the room on the theater bed. Yeah. So apparently she went in for CS okay. without her being ready for it. The same doctor took her 
and told her, you must do CS now. She wasn't ready. Mm. And they came and told me, you're next. I'm like, next for what? Mm. CS. I wished someone explained mm. nicely. Yes. And told me, we would like to do CS because yeah. of this and yeah. this and Prepare this. You Prepare you yeah. But just telling me, the baby will get infection and the baby will die. And then you'll start complaining the hospital wow. didn't take care of you. And I was like, okay. Mm. They tell me you're next. I'm like, no. Mm -hmm. I'm not ready. Yeah. The two doctors said, you know, weighing two doctors' words against one doctor. So you're like, they couldn't be mistaken. Mm -hmm. And they come all in different times. Yes. So I would like to go with their word because they told me, this is Saturday, they told me you can actually wait mm -hmm. until Monday and you can in be induced again if the labor pains don't come naturally. Okay. Then after that, yeah. if it doesn't happen, whether you like it or not, we'll take you in for CS. Okay. Because now we'll be putting you and the baby in danger. Yes. So I, I, I was now working towards Monday. Okay. So I was in between there and my mom was in around. My husband had walked out. Remember, it's around lunchtime. Yes. They've gone. They've, they've been tired in and mm. out of hospital and my siblings. Yeah. So I'm alone and I'm like, I'm not ready. There's nobody here. How do yes. I just go into theater with yes. no one here? Can we wait? Mm -hmm. And they're like, ha, tunakuambia. This mm -hmm. is risky. And then they were like, now you're making the, hard, the hospitals work hard. We are going to transfer you from this hospital. Maybe it's the money that you don't have. I don't refuse. The bills were going very high. Yeah. But it didn't mean that we don't want to go for CS. It's just that I yeah. didn't understand. I, yeah. I was so confused. Yeah. Mm. So we will remove you from this hospital. We will transfer you to a cheaper hospital. I am starting your transfer process. Wow. So that is like, still the doctor. Still the doctor. Mm. I was like, was this necessary? Like, mm. can't you speak nicely yes. and tell me what is happening? Yeah. I call my husband and he says, no, you can't be transferred. Stay mm. there. We will find the money. We will pay. Yeah. But stay there. You can't be transferred. So yeah. tell them no. Mm -hmm. So Saturday evening reaches. Now I'm really a mess, Kambua. I'm stressed. Yeah. That time I was 23 because mm -hmm. I got married yeah, when I was yeah. 22. So mm -hmm. now I got pregnant. So I was like 23. I've never had this experience yeah. before. Yeah. I've never worked with somebody with such an experience. So everything was so new mm -hmm. and very confusing. Mm -hmm. No labor pains. I'm stressed. Yeah. And so evening reaches, I ask the nurses at the reception mm -hmm. for the maternity ward. I'm like, am I at risk? Yeah. They said, no, you're not. Okay. So why is the doctor pressuring me? It's like, uh, because we don't know, but yeah. he's the doctor. Yes. We are the nurses. Okay. So we really can't tell you yeah. where this all stands at. Mm. I kept doing back and forth mm. to the reception, to my war room, to the reception. Like, yeah. explain to me, yes. if I'm at risk right now, take yeah. me and have this yes done. Yes. They're like... Actually, medically, you're still okay. Okay. But if the doctor says you go in for it, mm. you might have to go in. But mm. you decide what you, you want to yes. do, what is peaceful. Mm -hmm. Which is right for you. Yeah. yeah. Mm. So I finally decided, you know what, I'm tired. Let's yeah. do this. Yes, that okay. was midnight. Yeah. And they got called the doctor and it was the same doctor on duty. Oh, dear. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Then I'm like, I think I don't have anything much to say here. Yeah. And remember before that, he came to my room. Yeah. I was alone. I had just gone to the shower to get rid of the yes. amniotic stuff. And yeah. I walk in the room and I find him and a nurse okay. with a consent paper yes. to say, I take full responsibility if my baby dies. It is all my fault. And I didn't read yeah. because I was in tears and I was overwhelmed. Yeah. He held my hand mm. and he put my hand on the paper. And he made me sign. I didn't know what I was signing. Wow. So my mom was luckily there. She had walked in mm. and she took the paper from my hand. What are you signing? Then she was reading what was there. She's like, no, you can't be forced to sign this. Because me, I was like, mom, I want to get done with this. I'm overwhelmed. Yeah. She was like, no, you can't be signing such things. And she asked the doctor to, the doctor to leave the room because she really got in a, like, an argument with him. Why are you doing this and all that? She's a pastor. <laughs> yeah. But that day I saw my mom. Yeah. yeah. Mm. She's like, no, get out. Mm. So by night now, you know, I'm already scared. 
So it's like if my baby dies, it's my responsibility. Mm. So I don't want my baby to die. Now, since it's already difficult, mm. there's no right choice. Yeah. There's no right choice. Yeah. Whether it's yes, whether normal, there's no right choice. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I'd rather die if I'm going mm -hmm. to die in the CS room. Yeah. But I died to save my child. Trying to save your child. Yeah. Mm. So now midnight I went and the doctor says she can wait until morning. I'll come at 7 a.m. Was he trying to prove a point or I what was that? Know. Yeah. So I'm like, you said I'm at risk. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you look. I'll come. So it's the nurse that came to give me the word because he was not wow. the one that came. So I'm like, okay, so this thing doesn't seem as serious as I thought. Mm -hmm. So I released my husband. I'm like, you know what? You've been here. It's been a lot. Go yeah. and rest. Mm -hmm. Mom said she will stay. Okay. Because she had napped during the day. Yes. So she said she will stay. Him, he can go and rest mm -hmm. and also figure out other stuff. Yeah. So he stayed with mom. Then around midnight, just immediately after the nurse left, labor pains came. Okay. And they were so bad. Wow. Fine. It was not like contractions so of one minute you yes. rest. Yes. Because I'd read those stuff. Yes. <laughs> there was nothing <laughs> like that. <laughs> I was in pain throughout. Ah, there was no rest. Was very intense. I see counting. Mm. There was no counting. For me, it came and it just came. Wow. So we were with mom and I'm like, oh, finally. And as much as it's painful, yes. I'm like, Finally, it's happening. I am going to give birth yes. like a Hebrew woman. <laughs> <laughs> pop, pop in when yes. go home. Eh, uh -huh. I didn't. Uh -huh. 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 6 a.m. Now I'm looking forward to 7 a.m. The doctor is coming. Yeah. 7 a.m., I'm still in pain, constant pain. Mm -hmm. My mom, I remember later on, she told me, I have given birth to seven children. Mm -hmm. I've taken so many people to the hospital. I've never seen anybody in such pain. Oh my God. But I couldn't tell you. Yeah. I was just praying. Yeah. By that moment, I kept telling God, you were abandoned me. This was not the agreement. This was not what I signed up for. Yeah. I am your child. Mm -hmm. Like If it's following everything you've said, I've followed. I've yeah. done everything. But this pain is yeah. too much. I can't even bear it. But I remember months before that I would have dreams when I'm sleeping, mm -hmm. where I would just wake up and my baby is handed to me. Okay. My sister had a similar dream. Yes. That she dreamt I was just sleeping in the hospital and she was the one that received the baby mm -hmm. and brought me the baby. Okay. For me, I was sleeping, it's like I'm sleeping in a room. The room had lights and mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. and a doctor gave me yeah. the baby. Yeah. So it's later on that thing made sense mm. to me mm. that I was actually going to go on a CS journey. Yes, yes. But because church, we've been told women of God. Yeah, Hebrew birth. Hebrew birth, no pain, just yeah. one push, yeah, the baby's yeah. out. Yeah. I was waiting on that. Yeah. I didn't even remember the signs. I didn't even connect because I was remembering it later on. Yes. That ah, mm. God had communicated he this thing before. You. Yes. So it all made sense later on, mm. but it didn't help with the traumas and things that happened in between. Yeah. So I finally went to the theater. Mm. The theater. Theater. Because mm. by around nine, the doctor walked in with a number of nurses okay. and the other doctor that had also been seeing me. Yes. And I thought they've come to my rescue. Come mm. he came and said, Ni uyu mama, amekuwa kikata kuza. She's been here for a whole week. She's been refusing to go give birth. She doesn't want to do now, look at her. So I'm here to show you it is not my fault. I'm still in so much pain and he's talking like that. And uh, I remember the other doctor, he was very calm and he was elderly. Mm. And I looked at him, I'm like, Doc, you know me. I'm trying to talk in between my yes. pains. You've been here, mm. you've induced me mm. twice. Mm. And you've said, I am still okay. Yes. And you know my story, mm. then he's like, then the doctor is like, okay, give me the gloves, let me check her up, now the other one. Yeah. Then I'm like, you can't touch me because yes. you might be wanting to prove a point. Yeah. So this time I was scared. Like, what if he puts his fingers in me and then he does something in me and yeah. then something happens and then he's like, yeah. I said I it. You. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I said, no, you can't touch me. Yeah. I'd prefer to work with this other doctor instead. Wow. So 
my mom said, you can leave. And the other doctor agreed. And mm-hmm. the nurses, they say, if the patient is not comfortable, you yes. can't do anything. Mm-hmm. So he left the room. Yeah. So I'm like, doctor, how many centimeters am I? Okay. <laughs> Please tell he me tells, we have progressed <laughs> from one. <laughs> okay, at least we moved okay, from thank there. God. He tells me you're at four. Whew. And like, how many hours do I need to reach 10? It's like around 15 hours I start counted. I'm like, never. No. Take me to that CS. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. I can't do this. Mm. Before that, there were people who came to pray for me, you know, being from church, a pastor's yes. wife. Yes. Pastors came, they yes. were praying and my, they laid hands on me. Yeah. I like, in Jesus' name, you will give birth like a Hebrew woman. You yes. will push this baby out. This time I was really angry. Yeah. Because I'm like, this God is not even doing anything. Mm. So I just opened my eyes and looked at the person when they were praying. Mm. I think when they were opening their eyes, they were shocked to find. <laughs> <laughs> a pastor's wife looking at them like that. Like, I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. It's just that they were older. I would yeah. have told them, mm. I don't care. I yes. want this child out. Yes. Because I'm tired. Yeah. Yeah. So they left the room, but I didn't agree with them. I never even said amen. Yeah. Because at this point my conversation with God had changed. Mm. Is Lord, yeah. get me this baby out yeah. alive. Yes. And yes. me alive. Yeah. I don't know how you're going to do this. Mm-hmm. If it is CS, if it is mm. pushing, whatever. Yes. That is all I care about. Mm-hmm. So my CS, before now I went to the theater room. Mm-hmm. The nurses, they were preparing me, putting in the line and mm-hmm. stuff and all that. And one of them, as she was preparing me, she said, mm. Unajua, nyokweli, watoto, they get infections yeah. and we take them. I heard you say, Nick, you. Yes. I used to say, and I see you. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay, we're both fine. <laughs> so we, we take them there and then they die. Yes. My mother heard that thing. She gave the nurse a slap on the neck. I love your mother. <laughs> If she watches this, Mama, I love you. I salute you. Yeah. She gave her a slap on the neck yeah. and told her, drop everything down and get out. I love your mother. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> she's had enough. Yeah. And negative talks? No. no. Yeah. Her mind has gone through a lot. Yeah. She told the other nurse, are you able to do what she was doing to mm-hmm. prepare her for theater? She mm-hmm. said, yes. Mm-hmm. Can you mind your tongue? Yes. She said, yes. And like, you've seen what I've done. I wouldn't mind again if you talk negatively yeah. here. Yeah. So the nurse prepared me quietly. Yeah. She didn't say, oh. <laughs> Keep your opinions to yourself. Yes. Mm. And I was ready and I was taken to the theater. My husband was, was on the way coming because now we had to make a decision quickly. Mm-hmm. I just let him know. I called him like, Do you, are you okay with this? Yes. All this time is like, you know what, whatever you decide. Yes. If you want to wait, I'll wait with you. Yes. If you want to go to the theater, you will okay. go and I'll be here. I'm okay with anything. Okay. So by the time he came, I was already taken down because yeah. it was faster now. The pain was too much. Yeah. Have you ever been an obedient grown up? Yeah. When they're telling you sit, you, you sit. sit. Are you even asking how straight? Yeah. <laughs> Don't move, okay. Yeah, okay, I'm even asking, is that straight enough for you? Yeah. Okay, is this place anything hiding? No, yes. so they give me the injection. Yeah. And it went, that peace, mm. I'm not, I had not known peace. Wow. I felt like a relief yeah. came upon me and I felt joy. Wow. Because the pain completely went instantly. Mm-hmm. And I was like, somebody yeah. can actually feel normal. Yeah. This was too much. Yeah. And so, how do you even explain labor pain? I I don't know. I haven't experienced labor yeah. pain, so I don't know. I know somebody <laughs> should tell us a word that can explain that thing. Yeah. So I felt so much relief mm. and um, they did this, yes. Yes. But they prayed before they started. There were mm. like 10 doctors in there mm. and they all removed their hearts mm. and they, they prayed and mm. they were playing some soft music, yeah. worship in yeah. the background. Yeah. That gave me a lot of peace. Mm. But then when I was lying on that bed, it's like a cross. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm stretched <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah. I was even wondering, because I added so much weight. I'm like, hey, me big like this, how am I going to fit on this thing? But I fit <laughs> it. <laughs> I'm so huge. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. So it felt nice. Mm. They started doing the ten men. Mm. The two ladies came in and they were the ones who received the baby. Yes. 
But I remember thinking to myself, this lights, this yeah. place feels like, mm. hey, you can easily die in here. Mm. The silence, the mm. lights, the garments they're putting on. And I just told God, you know what? In your hands, I give my soul. Yeah. Whatever happens in here, you're in control. Because I was thinking, what if I got raped in here? I can't even move. Yeah. Like, what if anything happened to me? I can't even say anything. Mm. So I was like, God, I trust you. So I let them do what they were doing. And I remember when they opened me up, I heard a cry from within me. Yeah. And I heard the doctor said, we've never heard such a cry. Baby crying from inside. Wow. She was tired. Wow. And so they removed and she was very loud. Yeah. So she got out mm. and they just showed me I just looked at her, she was mm. so white, mm, pale. pale, I don't know, pale. Mm. And I'm like, why do people say babies are cute? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, <laughs> thank you for the honesty, because when they're fresh out of there. Like, uh, no. <laughs> they're very precious, yeah. uh, cute, maybe in a few hours. <laughs> yeah, after they're cleaned. After they're cleaned. Because honestly, me, I was looking for the face, I'm like, uh, I can't see anything. <laughs> yeah. I'm just seeing someone pale and yes. she was so tiny. Yeah. She was, I think, three. She was not very tiny yeah. compared to the stories I've heard. Mm. She was like 3.2. Okay. It's a big yeah. baby. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But I remember feeling so nice. Yeah. And I blacked out. Mm. I didn't wake up mm. immediately. So I don't know how she got out of the room. Yes. Because she was taken, but her father said, because he was coming, we like down. Mm. And she was, he was coming from the lift when yeah. he met two ladies holding a baby. Yeah. And he just felt, That's this is my mine. child. And he went back to the lift with them. Wow. And followed them to the NICU. Yeah. And they went inside. <laughs> just so he saw where she was put. Yes. And all that. Then he came yes. back. I was in the recovery room. That place felt like... It's a place waiting death. Yeah, it's very cold. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. I was freezing and so many blankets. Yes. But yeah, the baby was out. Wow, I mean, oh my goodness. I love that you've just given us blow by blow of what happened. Mm -hmm. There's certain things that I have to mention and then we'll, we'll proceed from there. Mm -hmm. Number one, um, this doctor, it's just, it's a reminder that there are people who get into the profession just because it's another profession, it, it will put money on the table, yeah. it will pay their bills, but they don't have a heart for the people yeah. because this doctor just sounded very cruel and humane, inhumane mm. on very many mm. levels. Mm. But I love that at some point mm -hmm. you said, mm -hmm. I do not want you to be the one attending to me. Yeah. And I think that, um, and maybe some people will say, no, we're speaking from a place of privilege. I think you need to know that you actually have a right oh, yeah, you do. to say that mm. I'm not comfortable yes. with this person yeah. attending to me yeah. in a hospital. Yes. And many of our hospitals will respect that mm. uh, for whatever reason that you feel you know, within mm. reasonable bounds, of course, mm -hmm. not those, not sometimes also pregnancy <laughs> talks, <laughs> talks to us, you know, this one smells bad. Um, but in a situation like this, where you felt, no, my life and the life of my child could be jeopardized, mm -hmm. that you are able to speak for yourself and say what you want. Mm -hmm. I love that your mother excused the nurse out of the room from serving you, mm -hmm. because in that moment, you needed someone who is speaking life to you. Yeah. I have to say, I don't like the fact that she said the NICU is a place where babies go to die because, mm. and I have to correct that because the NICU is a very special place where babies go to fight for their lives. Mm -hmm. And um, ba ba babies die even when they're not in the NICU. They yeah. die at home, babies mm. die in different places. So mm. we cannot say that that's a place where babies go to die. It's a very wrong perception. Mm -hmm. So here to make a ta. Mm. As, a, as, a, as a primi mom, yes. the Nikki is very close to my heart. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much strength coming from you, Dorcas, but I'm trying to imagine you having gone through such a beating emotionally, mentally, mm -hmm. all those days you're laboring, being told all sorts of different things. You don't know if it's CS or natural or whatever. Mm. I also like that you said, you know, um, th this is something very important, especially for us as for Christians, because mm. we all have that thing of, when you go to give birth, it will be a Hebrew birth. It will be quick and be like, whatever. Beloved child of God. Yes, because Push you're a, baby a child of God. Yeah. <laughs> so when a different path comes, mm -hmm. you're even 
afraid resistant. or ashamed to talk about it. Yeah. You're resistant mm. to it. Even when you're being told, this is the way we feel, mm. this is the way that you should take. Mm. And I think it's so important for us to know, to have wisdom mm -hmm. in every situation, mm -hmm. even as Christians, and mm -hmm. to know that our paths are different, yeah. you know? Yes. Our paths are different. Mm -hmm. uh, the Hebrew women were the Hebrew women. Mm -hmm. uh, Dorcas is Dorcas, Kambua is Kambua. Yeah, and God is in the theater and too. And God is in the theater too. Mm -hmm. Exactly, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to correct that, we, to take off that pressure. And, mm -hmm. and for anyone who's watching who's never had a baby and you are at that place where you're like, I'll just have a Hebrew birth, I'll just have a Hebrew birth, mm -hmm. I'm very happy for you and I pray that it comes to pass. But I also want you to have an open mind to know that God could decide to take you on a completely different path yeah. and to be open to it. And as Dorcas has said, God is in the theater too. Yes. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's move from there. Yeah. So how does this now look? Baby has come. Mm -hmm. Where are you at with everything? So I remember she came out around 12 or 5. Mm -hmm. And after that, I think I woke up, it was dark. So I don't know how long I stayed in the recovery room. Yeah. But she was taken in the new, to the new queue yeah. and I would go... Before I went there, I went, I, w I went to my room mm -hmm. where my husband was there and we were with him throughout. So I was trying to feed, taking those light stuff. Yeah. And it was late into the night or early in the morning. Okay. I don't know, because I really slept. I was yes. just sleeping because yeah. it's been days I had not slept. Tired, yeah. So now I finally asked, maybe it was around 3 a.m. Mm -hmm. I'm like, can I see the baby? Yeah. Because I hadn't seen the baby. Mm -hmm. Then I was told, no, you can't move for now. Yes. And then I just asked him, do you have a photo? Okay. And he showed me, I was like, oh my God. Yeah. This is such a cute child. Oh. You know, after the cleaning. Yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah. And I remember I just kept saying, keep showing me that oh, photo. Yeah. If I died, it was worth it. Wow. This baby is so cute. Yeah. Mm. And so tomorrow morning now, mm -hmm. I had to start the journey to breastfeeding. Someone would have told us that thing. Mm. So I had to walk to the NICU and yes. have the baby given to me mm. so I could start breastfeeding. I've raised, helped my mom raise my younger siblings. Mm. But I didn't know it's completely <laughs> different. I don't know how to carry this child to breastfeed. Yes. <laughs> and they had to place her in my hands. Mm. Sometimes they'll have to support. If my husband is not there, they'll have to support my hand yes. so that I can be able to place her to latch. Mm -hmm. But there was no milk coming Yeah. yet. Mm. And it, I got blisters. Yeah. So I didn't want breastfeeding mm. for the few days because we stayed in the hospital this was sunday yeah that she was removed yeah and i was you have you heard i say she was removed because yeah. for a long time i didn't believe i gave birth ah. and it really affected me mm. and i can't believe i said it again now it's okay We're healing. Yeah. so yeah i re now we stayed in the hospital up to friday the other week yeah because she had to be observed on antibiotics and stuff and so I used to go breastfeed her and go back to my room. Okay. I remember on this day, I just couldn't. Mm. I was stressed, I was overwhelmed. It's, it's hard. I don't know how to place her well. Yes. I have blisters, the milk is not coming. And I was just so overwhelmed. I switched off my phone yeah. so that I don't receive calls from them, mm. from the people in the nursery. So I don't receive calls. I just slept and I was crying. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember my husband calling at some point and say, they've been looking for you mm. to go breastfeed the baby. I'm like, I don't want to breastfeed. Mm. I don't want, because they had gone to pick some stuff. Because we, we are staying in the hospital so yes. long. Yes. My sisters have been in and out. My mm. friends have been in and out. My sister-in-law. Yeah. So it's been so much. People also need rest. The yeah. truth is, even these people, they need yeah. rest. Because some people will be like, why were you alone? I'm like, they're human beings. They're tired. They're tired. And yeah. taking care of me already, it's a lot of work. And they need a moment. Yes. And so... He said, try and just mm. go breastfeed the baby. I'm mm. like, I don't care. Mm. They will give her formula. Yeah. I really don't care. After all, I found a nurse. There was a really nice nurse, yes. nurse in there. Mm. She was also expectant. And she always loved carrying my Sela. She's called Sela. Mm. And nice yeah, so she would always carry her and she gave her formula. Yeah. I told him, tell them to give her formula. I don't feel like mm. So they gave her that and the following day I tried again. And I, I remember sitting in there with other women 
doing the kangaroo for the mums with the preemie babies. Yeah. And I would be grateful that mm. I'm not struggling with the weight. Yeah. But then I will be so annoyed mm. that I can't breastfeed. Yeah. So I'm like, it was too many emotions mm. at once. And that is where I started going, like losing it yeah. in my mind. Yeah. How can I be a mom? I'm not able to breastfeed my baby. How can I not want to go breastfeed my baby? Yeah. What kind of a human being am I? What mm. kind of a mom am I? So I'll sit there crying and mm. I'm breastfeeding. Wow. And we'll tell each other with the mama, you'll be fine. And then another one was like, do you know I've been commuting coming here for the past two months now? Because mm. my baby was born underweight. Mm. And I'm so happy that it's reached 1.2 kgs. Yeah. Be encouraged, yeah. you will get through this, you'll be able to breastfeed. So, those things helped me yes. in there. I would, now, I started loving to go sit in there okay. because of the other mothers mm. and they were older. Mm -hmm. So, I would sit there with them and how they're telling me stories and stuff would encourage me. But now we went home, yes, from the hospital. Uh -huh. So, now that this little community you had is, is gone not there. Mm -hmm. Sadly, mm -hmm. I never took numbers, okay. So I don't know how to talk to anybody within the period, the season of my life yeah. where I was at, and yeah. there was no one else. Mm -hmm. Remember, all my friends are not yet married, yes. so they've not given birth. Mm. So I'm just me and my mom and my husband yes. and my family. Yeah. So I went back, and I remember it used to piss me off mm -hmm. having somebody take care of me. Mm -hmm. You didn't want anyone to take care of you? Why should you take care of me? I should be able to take care of myself. So I was feeling like I'm a burden. Like I can only get cleaned when someone is available. Yeah. And it's not like they were not available. They have to take care of me, care of the baby, and also make sure I am clean, I've eaten and everything. They were doing everything. Yeah. But they thought of, I need your permission, I need your help to get clean. Ha ah, made me feel good. I kind of used to feel I'm useless because yeah. I'm just being a burden on everybody else. Yeah. They never showed that. Yes. But in my head, I'm just you like, I'm a firstborn. So. I always did things on my own and stuff. Mm -hmm. And now I'm just here stressing everybody. Yeah. So I started being so angry mm -hmm. and so crying every time and the changing of diapers. I don't even know how long you should give in between you change them. <laughs> <Maybe it's time. laughs> yeah. And I want to be the strong mom. I want to yes. do everything. So I don't want people helping because I want to be present. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. I have a point to prove. Yes. So I will stay awake through the night mm -hmm. so that my baby doesn't poop on herself or pee on herself yeah. and then actually making a diaper or something yeah. and I wasn't aware. Yeah. So that was affecting me. At mm -hmm. some point, I stopped eating. Mm -hmm. No, I was so stressed. I'm just like, the baby's okay, is the baby okay, is the baby okay? Yeah. But it was so bad that I left, after I left my parents' place and now to my house yes. with my husband, just the two of us, mm. it became more worse. Because mm. it's me and him yeah. with no knowledge. He's yeah. the last born. He's yeah. never lived with a woman who's given birth. We've yeah. never had any experience of this sort. And I will snap. Mm. Literally, when he's gone, mm. I'll sit like here and place the baby very far. Because yeah. I was scared. I used to feel like I'm not living in a real world. Yeah. It's a dream. I'll yeah. wake up out of the dream and I'll continue with my life. Yeah. So I used to be afraid that when I'm holding the baby, mm. in those moments where I felt sane, yeah. I used to be afraid like when I hold the baby, I mm. might let go of the baby mm. and the baby would fall yeah. and something would happen to the baby and yeah. I'll feel bad. Yeah. So to be safe, mm. I placed her away yeah. and I stayed and watched. But that was so hard because I, again, I would feel guilty. Mm. What kind of a mom are you? Why can't you hold your baby? Mm. So I would really cry when I'm alone. Yeah. Then I didn't know it was getting bad until I started calling my mother and asking her, was I pregnant? Wow. Did I, I give birth? Remember, I'm struggling. Yeah. Giving birth is pushing. Yes. And Mine was taken from my womb. So I never gave birth. Mm. So that reality had not sunk in. I hadn't accepted that mm. CS is also giving birth. Yeah. I just knew pushing is giving birth. Mm -hmm. So I struggled with that. Then I would call her, was I pregnant? Mm -hmm. Did I give birth? How did I look like when I was pregnant? Do you have photos? Can you send me? 
and she'll talk to me and tell me, Dorcas, you're okay, you gave birth. Wow. This is what happened. Mm. Look at your phone. Here's mm. the photo. Here mm. you are pregnant. Mm. I'll wake my husband up yeah. at night and ask him, who are you? Wow. Are you my husband? Mm. When did we get married? Show me photos. Okay, this is me. I looked very different. Mm. I became so big. Yeah. I wasn't prepared. Yeah. And then I even more to the point that when I was showering, mm -hmm. my wash towels used to remain with dark skins that were falling off my body. Were you scrubbing yourself too hard? No. Were your skin it's was the soft, peeling? I don't know whether it was peeling or it okay. was just, I don't know. Okay. But the washcloth is just the soft ones. Okay. And it used to remain with skin, with skin on it. Mm. And I went through the constipation. Yeah. It was so hard. Mm. So it's really messed me up. I would ask him, who are you? I think the first day he was like, okay, this pregnancy craziness, this women and giving birth. Mm. He didn't think it was that serious. He didn't think it was that serious. Then it was an everyday question in the night. Wow. Until one day he's like, what's going on with you? Mm. Then it became now more serious, but still we don't know it's postpartum depression. Mm. So I would ask him, is that my baby or is it a dolly? Is she real? Is she ours? What's her name? Every single day, I would feel my mind pain. Not my head. Yeah. My mind is paining. Mm. My mom normally makes fun of it nowadays because yeah. I used to call her and say, Mom, my mind is paining. Yeah. So nowadays when I tell her I have a head, I say, is it your head or your mind? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can you explain your yeah. mind paining? I'm yes. like, I don't know, but my mind was paining. Yeah. And I used to feel like it's going to be removed from my head mm. and I'm going to lose it. Mm. So I'll start walking back and forth in the house and mostly it happens when I'm alone. Yeah. So I'll start screaming, yelling and tell Jesus, hold my mind together, hold my mind together. I feel like I'll go crazy. Mm. I'll even, I might even walk out naked without knowing because it's like my world is not real anymore. Yeah. I would cry so much. I would just be sad. Yeah. Literally, I was not happy. Mm. I was just always sad. Yeah. And how was baby doing? You were still breastfeeding, baby Very doing well. okay? She's Milk now came even too much. Wow. Now, even that made me to be stressed. Yeah. Because it's flowing, no matter even if I put breast pads, it's yeah. coming through. Yeah. Through the night, I have to change my bed just like three times. Mm. That was stressful. The milk mm. smell. Yes. <laughs> Everything is too much. Everything is just too much. And I'm like, hey, I used to feel like I'm losing my head. Yeah. So I will tell Jesus, hold my mind together. If you let me go, mm. I'm gone. And so as you're going through all this, your husband is seeing what's happening. He now realizes something. this is serious. Your mother is definitely aware that something is going on mm -hmm. that's not right. Mm -hmm. At what point was this thing given a name, you know, because you obviously don't know that you're going through know. postpartum mm -hmm. depression. At what point was it given a name? When did you identify this is what it is and... How did you and the people around you mm -hmm. start to deal with it? I actually am the one that gave it a name yeah. finally. Mm. And that was like when we're like in, uh, the baby is like seven months old. Wow, it's a long time. Yeah, because mm. I used to go to church. I joined the worship team again mm -hmm. to stay sane. Okay. Because that's why I felt a yes. bit, I'm letting it out mm -hmm. and I have to, it was a good thing. Mm. So until when she was like seven months, eight months, actually maybe nine. Yes. That's when I was like, ah, mm. I've been depressed. Yeah. And it gave our marriage a very hard time. I'm sure. Because my husband has never been in this situation. I have never been here. And he's married, he married a happy person. Yes. And this is an angry person. She's always shouting. Yeah. And asking me who I am. <laughs> who are you? <laughs> In my own house. In your own house, you know. <laughs> and I am not welcoming. At this time, I'm just annoyed about the existence of everybody. Yes. And I was expecting him to understand. Mm. But what is he understanding? He doesn't know. He doesn't know what's on. going on. Mm. So that's actually most people in that period is where you'll see the man just leaves his wife or the wife left. Yeah. Because it's a very hard place to be at. You can't expect someone's son yeah. to be understanding what exactly you are going through. You yourself, don't you understand. don't know what you're going through. Yeah. So it is hard on him as well. Yeah. So our house went, wasn't such a nice place to yeah, be in. I'm sure. When did the light start coming in? 
when finally I would have a conversation with God mm. and I would hear him and he'll tell me I'm holding. When I'm crying out for help, hold my mind together and then I'll feel calmness. Yeah. Then I would always, ah, I can always talk to Jesus. He understands this thing that I don't understand. Because when I say hold my mind, I would feel the calmness. The anxiety will leave me yeah. and I will feel much more peace. Yeah. So I'm like, there's someone yeah. who gets to know what I'm going through, even yeah. if I don't get it. Yeah. So that is where it started coming in. And that is like mm. nine months, ten wow. months. Wow. So then I'm guessing as the anxiety starts going, you start to be more accepting of the baby or are you still I always the accepted the baby. Mm. I never rejected. I was just scared of dropping of handling her. hurting her. H hurting her, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I loved her so much to yeah. the point my baby never left my sight. Ah. Now I became like, I'm obsessed. Yeah. So I didn't want her to leave my sight. Okay. So I stayed with her throughout. Yeah. Until I think the first time she left my sight was like when she was nine, ten months. Okay. When my husband saw, mm. you, you're weird. Yeah. Like there are just things. I think you need rest. Okay. And he told me, let's take this baby to your parents. Okay. You sleep. Yeah. Let her stay there for three days. You sleep. Wow. So by force, yeah. he made me go give my baby to my <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you were not too happy about I that. I wasn't. I was yeah. complaining the whole I'm way because sure. we left Machakos and came dropped the baby in Ngong. Yeah. Ah, we were driving so back. You can't it's even so, say you I'm can't, going to drop Yes. That. That's how far he wanted the baby to be so I don't ah. get a hold of the baby yeah. and go on the crazy cycle. Yes, yes. So we went home, but I wasn't happy the whole three days. Yeah. Because now milk was too much. Remember, oh. I refused to pump okay. so that I don't have a reason to not have the baby in my sight. Ah. It was that bad. Yeah. I refused, yeah. so I didn't have a pump. I wasn't pumping, but the milk had reduced, so I was like, I'll be okay. Okay. But the production went on. And yes. So I was feeling like I'm carrying stones on my chest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that can't be easy at all. So again, we had to go for the baby, but he stayed three days. We found a way of getting rid of the milk okay. for those days. Yeah. I tried to sleep. Yes. But at least he tried helping mm. in the ways he could. Yes. And my parents, my sisters, and used to disturb my sisters. Mm -hmm. Come to my house every weekend. Okay. You have to come. If you don't come, I'm really sad. Yeah. But they came, they showed up, and my friends. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good to hear that, you know, that your community from the very beginning, your community has was very present. Yeah. And even your husband finally taking that active when he maybe he didn't understand, but mm. he was like, OK, we need to do something. Yeah. So him forcing you to rest, mm -hmm. you know, saying, let's take the baby away. Mm -hmm. um, him calling your sisters, mm -hmm. that's him actively doing something to help you. Yeah. And I think a lot of women fall through the cracks because you're going through this and there's nobody who can say Let's help you in yes, this way, you know, yeah. and you can completely get a, a full mental breakdown. Oh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you mm -hmm. can because mm -hmm. you are heading on that path. Mm -hmm. But thankfully, thankfully, um, you know, it's almost like God just snatched you, yeah. you know, and you are right on the edge mm -hmm. and and surrounded you with the right people. Mm -hmm. So Dorcas, you, you know, I know that your journey to motherhood um, led you to have another baby. A mm -hmm. few, how many years later after after first baby? She was, Stella was like, Two years. Yeah. And uh, two months when I found out I was pregnant. Yes. So this is a whole different story. God is so good. Mm. So it was this day I was cleaning the house mm. and I remember God telling me, I'm going to give you another baby. Mm -hmm. I was like, this God doesn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> He doesn't like my marriage to continue <laughs> to prosper. Yeah, he's so against my prosperity in life. Oh my gosh, and I remember fun. telling God, you're a joker. Yeah. Hey, another baby who? Yeah. You want to kill me this After time around. That. Yes, this time around you want to kill me completely. Yeah. And he said, no, this mm. one is going to give you healing wow. and restoration. Wow. I said, thank you, dear Lord. Yes. I will let you know once I am ready for you yes. to give me another baby. Okay. And, uh, and I, again, he came and said, Dorcas, mm. I'm going to give you another baby. Yes. He said, no, Lord, I'm not ready. Mm. But now I told, we all know when mm. you've had a walk with God, mm. you know when he's spoken, he's spoken. He's not changing his mind. Mm. And nothing you say or do is going to change his mind. Mm -hmm. You'll have to adjust. Mm -hmm. 
And I knew that deep down and I started searching for a name that yeah. meant healing and restoration. And I found one, mm -hmm. Aruka. Aruka. Mm. And it's in Hebrew. Mm. My dad is a Hebrew teacher yes. and Greek. So I asked him, what does this name mean? Because you know, it's Google. You can't really trust Google that much. Mm. So he confirms there's yeah. actually a verse in the Bible. I need to remember that verse, mm. that the word healing that was used there was Aruka. Yeah. And it means total healing, yeah. mind, soul, body, yeah. finances, everything, yeah. and restoration. Yeah. Like this is, it's like wholeness. Like this sounds good, and I tell my husband when he came from church, I'm like, huh, I've had a conversation with God. Let me tell you, we are going to have another baby. Just looked at me like, hmm? <laughs> it's also like you're joking. Mm. You're both jokers. You're not tired. <laughs> Yeah. So it's like our marriage has just started thriving again. Yes. Yeah. And here you are telling yeah. me you and God <laughs> have had a meeting. Did, did, did you consult <laughs> You didn't even consult me. I think yeah. he was like, okay. Mm. So I let it go. Yeah. I've gone back to very small car. My waistline is back. My clothes, yeah. jeans, everything. I'm looking so nice. Yeah. And I just thought, where? Mm. I am going back there again. Yeah. And I'm like, no. Mm. So this day we are just sitting and I've been having running stomach, running stomach. And I'm like, I think I need to de warm. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> My God. Uh -huh. Plus it's been long, I de warmed Sela. Yes. Let's go mm. to the chemist. Mm. I buy something to deworm her mm. and I also buy something for myself. Mm. And as I was at the chemist, I bought for two of us, I was yeah. walking back to the car and the Holy Spirit said, go back, yeah. buy a test kit. Yeah. And like, according to me, mm. if you have to put any measures mm. to not get pregnant, mm. all those measures are you in place. Mm. Including mm. taking medicine, everything, everything yeah. possible so yes. that I don't get pregnant. Yes. And you're telling me what? Mm. Anyway, I want to prove you wrong. Okay. So I'll buy the kit. Okay. I bought the kit. Mm -hmm. We went home. Mm. I wanted to do all myself. Mm. And I, God is very important. The Holy Spirit has helped me make right decisions way too many times. Yeah. And he tells me again, read on the thing. Yeah. If in case of suspecting pregnancy, whether uh, you should take yes, or not. Yes. I'm like, what is this with so many rules like this? Why can't I just be myself? Anyway, I want to prove you wrong. Mm. I read and it said in case of sus suspecting pregnancy, do not take. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, let me take the pregnancy test. It was in the evening. I'm like, mm. after all evenings, they've said it doesn't work. Yeah, it's better taken in the morning yeah, before anything. Be, yes. So I'm like, I'm just going to prove him wrong. Yeah. I was pregnant, the line wasn't moving. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> they were not warm in your tummy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I saw the line is just dead. I'm like, the first step, yes. So I just bought one. Yeah. And I was pregnant. Wow. It was two lines. Wow. I was overwhelmed. Wow. Not with joy, mm. with fear. Mm. I'm like, everything came back to replay. Mm. And I felt anxious, like, there's no air enough for me to breathe. Yeah. And I just took the test, the strip, I went, gave it to my husband, yeah. and they went to the kitchen. I yeah. did thorough cleaning yeah. on that day, because mm. I didn't want the thought. Mm. So I cleaned, mm. cleaned. And I just had him tell our daughter, now, mm. <laughs> <laughs> mommy is going to have another baby. Wow. But for him, I don't know how he knew. Mm. He would tell me, because I was like, he feel so tight. I just feel like, you could be pregnant, mm. like never. Mm. Mm. I reject that thing. Yeah. I cannot be pregnant. Yeah. So for him, he didn't receive it like a shock. Mm. It was like a confirmation. Mm. So we didn't talk the whole of that night. Yeah. And uh, I was pregnant. Yeah. Now, funny side, mm. I went to the hospital to confirm because okay. I didn't believe it. Yeah. I was in denial. Mm. And they confirmed I was pregnant. Mm. Now when I did the scan, yeah. I was entering my fourth month. What? You are far gone. Yes, I was gone. You were in second trimester. Yes. <gasps> wow. My tummy was as flat. Oh my, my goodness. My clothes were fitting. Everything wow. was okay. But the moment they confirmed, you <laughs> nothing was <stopped> fitting. <laughs> <laughs> Your body is like, now yes, we're free. Now we're free. To <laughs> so I wow. don't know. Yeah. I was in my fault. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. 
um, I want to ask you this question because, um, you know, having gone through such a serious postpartum depression with Stella mm -hmm. and then being pregnant again mm -hmm. um, and having Stella, or rather having your second baby, Aru? Aruka. Aruka. Or Cindy. Cindy, Cindy or Aruka. Yeah. Um, were you, did you ever encounter any triggers, anything that made you feel like I could go back to that dark place? Do you have anything like that with baby number two? Yes, mm. I did. There mm. were so many times. Mm. But I remember now this time we were very intentional. Remember now we are aware. My yeah. husband is also aware. Yeah. So he was more home. He was yeah. more understanding. When I wanted to talk those things that were not making sense, he would listen, mm. not sure like I am crazy. Mm. And so I was more stable. Yeah. But some of the triggers would be like, why am I not carrying this baby as long enough? Mm. Why am I not doing those things I used to do before yeah. for Stella? Why yeah. am I not doing them for her? Mm. And also some triggers were like people's talks. Mm. And God said my baby is healing mm -hmm. and restoration. Mm. We still went through a very hard time financially. There was, I wasn't seeing the restoration. Mm. Those were triggers too. Yeah. Mm. And also... She was born with uh, eyes, yeah. always had, how do you call them, uchafu, mm. just okay. coming out. Yeah. No matter how much it cleaned, ah. they weren't going away. Mm. So you can imagine you've gone up to until when she was like four, five months. Yeah. Up to, I've gone for appointments for clinic checkups and everything. They've given me everything that I could do for her. Mm. Nothing was working. Mm. So it started working on me like, Lord, mm. this doesn't add up. Yeah. Are you about to kill me again? What yeah. is this? Because you can't be at peace when your baby's eyes are just always yeah, removing. So I'm always have I always have to walk like I have to clean her with salt water, warm water, so that it doesn't affect and yes. all those things. Clean stuff. Yeah, it was too much. You go out and people will be like, "I'm bono japanguza mtoto macho." I just cleaned like two minutes ago. Mm. So it became too much. I used to cry again, and I'm like. Mm. doesn't feel like healing, yeah. doesn't feel like restoration, yeah. feels more like another burden. Yeah. Mm. And I remember this day also sad and I said, Lord, I'm done. Mm. Tired. I'm mm. never going to clean her eyes again. Mm. There's nothing I can do to help. I'm done. I'm not praying. Mm. I'm not doing anything else. Mm. I'm just done. Mm. And the following morning I woke up, eyes were clear. I'm like, maybe she, 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 she did she, this yes. and then. Second day, her eyes are clear. The whole day, nothing. That day, fourth day, and my baby's eyes are clear. Wow. Amen. She has cute eyes. And oh I'm like, gosh. this is what I never used to see. These wow. things are just always here. Yeah. And people meeting her like, Mono japanguza mtoto macho. Yeah. No nini was chana sa zingine. And you're like, Hmm. You don't know. You don't know. This yeah. is the battle between me and God. Yeah. And there's this day we're in the house. My husband just, he resumed yes. church because yes. he had taken a break to mm. be with me at home. Mm. And this lady, she was elderly, she was a neighbor. And she came to my house. My house was messy. Mm. I wouldn't even lie because we didn't have our help. Yeah. Mm. And so my husband, I said, I'll come back mm. and I'll do the cleaning. Okay. I'll do everything once okay. I am back. Yeah. So I'm like, it's okay. I had food. I had some things to use. And the woman came in and it's like, how is this filthy? That time my baby was like a month or two. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay. She's like, I'll help you clean up. Okay. I'm like, okay, not bad. And mm. then she got somebody okay. called a cleaner. Okay. Came. I was happy. An yeah. older woman is helping wow. me. God, thank you. Yeah. Then when she was done with everything, was sitting in the sitting room. She's undoing my baby's hair. My mm. husband is yet to be back because he had a mission. Mm. And she went home. She even brought food. She okay. roasted chicken and oh, brought good. me eight. Mm. Then when she went home at 11 p.m., she sent me a message. You're a mother. You have two children. You cannot let your children to stay in such filth. You should do better. Wow. I cried. Wow. I'm like, I wish I knew. I wouldn't have let you in my house. Because yeah. I never used to let people in the house who I don't know or trust. Yeah. And I thought you were like my mom. Mm. And you showed like you understood. And this is what you have to say. Yeah. Well, I was like, okay, this is too much. 
And I told my husband, and he just, he got so mad. Yeah. He wanted to go bang at her door and mm. quarrel her and something. Mm. I told him, it's okay, we can just let it. But that thing took me so much back. Yeah. That I was like, okay, you've, you are a mom. Mm. Yeah. You know, this is not me making it up. I've gone through CS just the other day. Yeah. She told me, I've had six uh, six surgeries, six or four surgeries, mm. and mm. they were mm. very nini, those uh, intense ones. Yeah. But I still clean my house. I still ensure my place is clean. You can't do that. Your kids will get sick. You can't do that to your children. Yeah. And then <laughs> I thought she was going to pay for the cleaner. Uh oh. <laughs> Tell me, she left you the bill. <laughs> Tell me she didn't leave you the bill. She told me to pay the person. I, I think you should have let your husband bang on her door. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think he needed to bang on her door. That is unacceptable. Yeah. For a second, when you said this person said your house is filthy, my jaw dropped, and then you said, oh, she helped you clean. I was like, oh, my gosh. Mm, and then She's such a nice person. Yeah. Then you just dropped the ball. I'm like, she really did not need to have come and helped no. you. There's Should've a kind of help that you can get that leaves you more bruised and undign undignified yeah. than if you had just let me I'm be. So of course you were. You know, and a lot a lot of moms can relate to you. It doesn't even matter if you've had a CS or not. Just motherhood can be so intense that there are days where your house is chaotic. Yes. And you're like, I'm just trying to keep my children alive to stay sane, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that when a when someone decides to step in, your community, your friends or whoever, mm -hmm. let them come in to help, mm -hmm. not to break you, mm -hmm. not to shame you. Mm -hmm. um, come in and clean that house and go. Come in and cook and, and go. go, you know? Mm -hmm. Or ask, what can I do for you? Mm -hmm. Can I order anything for mm -hmm. you? Not to leave you feeling like you're doing such a bad job because as a mom, you're doing a great job. You carrying your children, bringing, you know, taking care of them, nurturing them. Mm -hmm. You're doing so much mm -hmm. already. Yeah. And you had no help, no you help. know, so. And no money to pay the and help. And no money to, and then someone has cleaned and left you a bill. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. I have so many choice words, but I will hold them because you told your husband not to bang on the door. Yeah. So I will also hold my words, mm. but that is just unacceptable. Mm. Um, and I'm so sorry that you had to go through that on your journey, on your postpartum journey. Mm -hmm. But as we wrap this conversation up, Dorcas, there's so much that we could say, but we need to wrap it up. Mm -hmm. um, there could be a mom who is, is feeling stuck mm -hmm. um, at that place of postpartum that it's so dark. Mm -hmm. They cannot see any light, any way forward. Mm -hmm. um, could be that their relationship is completely strained, maybe broken or mm -hmm. breaking. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that person who's listening to you right now? You can look into the camera and encourage them. Well, I can tell you that God wasn't stupid or foolish when he was giving you that baby. Mm. And he knew very well you are able to take care of the child, whether sane or insane. That's why he trusted you with that child. Mm. Keep going on. Every day is just another day to do better, to be yourself and allow those feelings. It's totally normal. It's okay to feel like you're a mess because most of the times you'll feel you're a mess mm -hmm. and it's okay. And the truth is you're a mess, but <laughs> it's not a mess that is going to break you or kill you. You will come through it. You'll come out of it. There's always something beautiful God is doing in our lives, even with the sad and bad stories. Mm -hmm. And so hang in there and hold on. You are just doing fine and God will hold you through. Mm -hmm. As for your marriage or your relationship, if it's breaking... I am praying that the Lord will give you guys wisdom mm -hmm. and just salvage it because it's not worth it to break up in that period. Yeah. It's yeah. not worth it. Yeah, because then it, it, the period passes. It passes. Yeah. It goes. Yeah. Yeah. Stella and Aruka are now how old? Stella is five and a half. She's yeah. turning six wow. in September. She's yes. so big. Yeah. And Aruka is turning three, uh, three. next month. Yeah. She is the person we needed in our house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she really brought the healing. Oh, she yeah. really did. And yeah. that's how my business was born. Uh-huh. Because it is after her, I yes. started receiving all this restoration. I never used to make clothes. Yes. It is during the period I was pregnant, I yes. started doing that. Mm -hmm. And God has been so gracious to the point it's been like two and a half years. Mm -hmm. 
I, I don't know how yeah. I reached here. Yeah. But I look back yeah. and say, God knows what we need. Exactly. Even without us knowing yeah. what we needed. I needed that baby, that wow. journey wow. for us to be here. My marriage needed that baby. Yeah. Her sister needed that baby. My family needed that baby. Yeah. And he really, he really sticks to his word. Mm. When he says, I will heal, mm. I will restore, mm. you might have some things not going on well in between, like my baby's eyes, finances and stuff, mm. but God will heal, mm. he will restore, and you will not remember the pain in a painful manner. Yeah, It will be a story you are sharing to encourage yes. other people. Because yes. for me right now, I don't know. Yeah. He gives me the knowledge, he mm. gives me the designs, he mm. gives me the ability. For instance, I didn't think about this dress I'm wearing. It's so beautiful. She designed this dress yesterday. Yesterday. When he told me that I needed so some colors, I'm yes. like, Lord, what do we do? Yeah. He told me, get this color, get this fabric and mix wow. it like this. Yeah. And so I love that journey of God. I love my depression period. It brought me here. Yeah. I loved, I conceived Aruka. Mm -hmm. We are here. Yeah. I loved everything about this. It was wow. all by God. It was God. worth it. It was worth it. Um, where can people find you if they want to order something from you, a dress or something? Where can they find you on social media? So I am on Instagram mm -hmm. at Mave Classics. Mave is my name, then yes. Classics. Yes. And uh, on Facebook, Dorcas Mave, mm -hmm. <laughs> TikTok in Anishi in the bad. <laughs> we'll work on Facebook and Instagram yes, for now. Please. Um, and we'll put her handles <laughs> over there. Follow her, place your order over there. Support yeah. this amazing mommy who's doing such a great job. And you're such a warrior, Dorcas. Thanks. Such a warrior. You have fought hard for yourself, for your life, for your children. And I applaud you and you. I celebrate who you've become. It's so beautiful to see how you blossom from that 17 year old that I, I met to a full mother, yeah, a wife. Yeah, now we're you talking know, motherhood with wife. you. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking motherhood. Um, and thank you for being honest yeah. and vulnerable with your journey because it's that honesty that helps pull somebody else out of the darkness. Mm -hmm. So thank you so, so much. God bless you. God bless your family, your children. Thank Are you, you. Do you, has God whispered that there's more coming? The Lord has you, uh, not whispered <laughs> nothing, nothing yet. So, but there is a way here and there. I'm like, Lord, I wouldn't mind another uh, one. It's just like in you're there. warming up to the idea. That is when I realize I am actually healed. Yes. Wow. Because I could never entertain such a thought. Yeah, yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, congratulations in advance. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait for the news, for the good news. Okay, wait for it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Oh, my goodness. That's the story of Dorcas Mave. Um, if you have walked the journey of postpartum depression, I'm sure there's something there that has resonated with you, um, that has given you a lifeline, I hope. Uh, I also want to say that there is help. There's therapy. There are people, professionals who can help you walk the journey. If you feel that you're walking, um, you're close to the edge, you know, you feel like you're losing it. You've had a baby. Those are not... You know, we say it's normal, it's normal, it's not. You need help, okay? It's so much on your mind, on your emotions, and you might just need someone to help you walk or talk through it. So help is available for you. Please reach out, talk to a friend, talk to a family member, say, I need help, I'm losing it, I need help. And for us who are rallying around our moms, new moms, keep a close eye. If something just seems like it's not, something is off, um, then find a way with wisdom, not to tell, don't tell someone, I think you're depressed. It's finding ways where they feel safe and and finding um, safe ways to help them, safe ways to help them out of that. But this has been Bing Kambua. Thank you so much for joining us today. Keep telling your people, your community to follow, subscribe, share, comment, and all of that good stuff. Now, Pendasana, and I'll catch you next time. Kwaheri. We were having a conversation and he told me, you see, God might have given us 60 years together or even 100 years together mm -hmm. and we might never get children of our own mm -hmm. but will you live your life a sad person wow a big question by the time we were finishing our third year in marriage we had best coupled for four couples okay wow and they had all gotten children oh my gosh yeah and us we are still there mm. 
and was like god like god even these people mm-hmm. they're just coming here for us to best couple them mm-hmm. we are serving in this ministry yeah. but us guys are just struggling yeah. like our life is struggle for children and we're helping people build their families around 2016 2015 2016 I stopped, I stopped serving i i i asked my i told my husband i i'm not i'm not able to serve joyfully yes and i i was a sad person 